how much do you love yourself? Because if you understand the value of self-love, you'll never be friends with those type of people. Most of the people out here are running around empty. They have no sense of self, no sense of self-love. When I say self-love, it has nothing to do with celebrity, money, materialistic things, and all of the things that your negative mind could probably go to. It has nothing to do with self-love, it has nothing to do with looks, nothing to do with cars and any of the superficial things that one would assume that could make you love yourself even more. It's a matter of knowing your value. It's a matter of you saying, I don't have to be around these people in these type of environments and situations in order for me to finally see the value in myself. I love me independent of you loving me. I believe in me. I know my self-worth. I am here and I have a purpose. There is no value in having wisdom, knowledge, insight, spirituality, love. Every day I am a work in progress. A person who can forgive nothing is a person who's totally destroyed psychologically and emotionally. Forgive your parents. Forgive any relationship that you ever had that didn't work out. Forgive everyone else in your life that has ever hurt you in any way. Forgive yourself. Forgiveness is giving up the hope that the past could be any different. I think for myself, and I know many of you, you think forgiving means accepting what has happened to you. Well, it is accepting that it has happened to you. Not accepting that it was okay for it to happen. It is accepting that it has happened, and now what do I do about it? Forgiving is giving up the hope, not holding on, hoping, wishing, that it could have been any other way than it actually was. Giving up the hope that the past could be any different. And when I got that, I think it took me to the next level of being a better person because I don't hold grudges for anything or any situation and neither should you. It's letting go so that the past does not hold you prisoner, does not hold you hostage. See, life is cyclic. You're not, what is, whatever experience you're having right now, it has not come to stay. It has come to pass. Not to stay, just to pass. It's just going through. The biggest challenge is, is to know what's happening. This is a part of this thing we call life. This too shall pass. And maintaining perspective, putting it in perspective. You have to be willing to break from the past to have the future you so desperately desire. You have to have the courage to allow yourself to honor the past as it was, to forgive those who need to be forgiven, to forgive yourself, and to acknowledge that everything led you to this point now. Everything. Let it go and begin to focus on developing myself. And I say to you, you're going to have people to do things to you. Things are going to happen to you. And the most important thing to do is to harness your will and let it go and move so you can grow, so you can get on with your life. It doesn't matter about what happens to you. What matters is, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do now, Les? 
But if you want to begin to move into your own personal greatness, if you want to begin to really enjoy a happy, successful, healthy life, you've got to be willing to go against the tide. You've got to be willing to harness your will. So as you're in the process of reinventing your life, write a description of the kind of person that you want to be. What are the things that you must overcome? What qualities about your personality you know that you're going to have to change because those particular characteristics are liabilities to you? What are your assets? What are your strong points? Look at and evaluating yourself to make that determination. Other thing is that in order to get out of a rut, we need some coaching. Find some trusted critics. People that you know care about you and love you. There's some things that keeps us from growing and getting out of ruts. Number one, we identify with feedback. We take it personal when someone wants to give us some feedback on where we are falling short and tell us about our blind spots. We want to have everything being positive about us. We're not perfect. It's, it hurts. I, I have a friend who's a trusted critic. I don't like him, but I love him. He doesn't tell me the things I want to hear. He tell me what I need to hear so I can grow. It hurts. It hurts when he put me on the hot seat. I can't stand it. But that's the only way that I can grow. And I'm glad that he loves me enough to risk our friendship to tell me what I need to hear, not what I want to hear. High performers are not dissatisfied strivers. They're not. They're happy. High performers are happier than their peers. We all believe that to get the top, it's going to be lonely at the top. And we all believe you have to grind and kill yourself to get there. Yeah. And that's completely wrong. And yes. the data proves it worldwide, which is, I think, just overcoming a lot of people's biases about how you work today. Because right now, especially today, like, you know, grind on social media is so popular. Or hustle. Or hustle. And it, by the way, none of the top 15% of high performers worldwide identify with those words. They literally don't. We asked them, we did a whole keyword analysis. Yep. This was actually pretty cool. And high performers explicitly say, these, these are the three driving feelings. If we said there was a high performance state, mm -hmm. it's, it's driven from these three things. Number one, full engagement. Yes. Number two, joy. Yes. And number three, confidence. Yes. That's what they relate with. Okay. That's where it's coming from. It's a joyous journey, not a dissatisfied one. And this, I had this conversation in the book um, because uh, I kind of maybe frame it this way. Each of these chapters opens with a vignette of somebody I worked with or a situation that I was in that demonstrated high performance. In this particular situation, I'm walking on a stage, thousands of people after a very famous musician was out there and was telling the audience that that person's secret to success, remember thousands of people, yes. their secret to that person, their whole speech, their secret to success was never settle. Never settle, nothing is enough, never settle. And never be satisfied, never be satisfied, always demand more. And I'm like, oh, my second slide, which was gonna be on jumbotrons in like 80 point text, was strive satisfied. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have to dispel this for all these thousands of people. I was totally freaked out. Yeah. And, but what I had to explain to people was not only the data, but it's this. Uh, if you're never satisfied, I mean, what, what, is, is it true that life is precious? If it's true that life is precious and you could be gone tomorrow, do you really want to think, you know what, I just never felt fulfilled. I never allowed myself to have a moment of credit. I never allowed myself to have a moment of peace. I never allowed myself to look at that and say, good job. That's not the way to live life. Right. I think just at a spiritual level, it's a bad move. And this book doesn't really go into a lot of that. It's more about the science and the heart stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think it's really important that people realize your job is to strive satisfied. And if you strive satisfied more often, you will be more of a high performer. And if you never give yourself credit, you're always beating up on yourself. You're always thinking that's not perfect enough, then what's gonna happen? Dissatisfied people burn out and they quit more often than satisfied strivers. So take joy in the moment, engage with what you're doing, allow credit and satisfaction and joy to come in. You can always be improving. Of course. But 
be proving, be improving joyfully. Yes. And if you're improving joyfully, then you're learning, you feel curious, you feel engaged, the joy is there, you'll get more confident because you're like, I'm gonna learn through this anyway, this is gonna be great. Because you know, this this thing is all over social media right now, like, you know, grind, work, whatever. And I'm like, it's just, it's popular and I see why that happens and I see why it's catchy. It's just not scientifically valid.